The Life is Strange games appear fantastical on the surface, with storylines that focus on superpowers and apocalypses. Yet, the games use these mythical elements in order to portray a grounded look at how trauma leaves lasting scars, even as we work to try to heal ourselves from our pain. Characters in the Life is Strange universe discover superpowers right at the moment of significant trauma. In the original Life is Strange, Max learns to manipulate time right at the exact moment that her best friend is killed. In Life is Strange 2, Daniel Diaz gains shockwave powers after his father is shot to death by a police officer. As a result, superpowers in the Life is Strange universe become linked with characters learning to overcome pain. Throughout her story, Max uses her newfound time powers to go back in time to save Chloe from dying over and over again. Daniel Diaz accidentally murders the police officer who shot his father when he gained his superpowers. For both Daniel and Max, their trauma made them stronger and gave them a way to try to take control of situations that they initially felt out of their control. Post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD, occurs when something happens that is completely out of our control, yet nevertheless redefines or shapes who we are. We are unable to completely reconcile who we are now in our minds because who we are now was not completely shaped by us. So in Life is Strange, superpowers give a chance to retake control. Rejecting trauma initially feels empowering. Life is Strange isn't the only time that trauma is linked to power. M. Night Shyamalan's Split focused on how trauma gives those who experience it an inner strength and power, which was metaphorically shown through the character's superpowers. Yet, Split ultimately seems to fetishize this trauma saying that those who experience trauma are better. The broken are more evolved. Rejoice. Yet, this ignores that handling PTSD and trauma is often a years-long, if not lifelong, process that requires one to completely recontextualize their sense of self. Life is Strange as a whole acknowledges this. While Daniel and Max's superpowers initially allow them to feel control, their superpowers ultimately are unable to stop the trauma they must confront. Chloe keeps dying no matter how many times Max tries to save her, and at the end, Max must decide between saving Chloe or her town. Either way, Max is powerless to completely control pain from happening, even with her new time superpowers. Similarly, Daniel cannot bring his father back from the dead, and his lashing out eventually gets another man killed. Trying to ignore one's trauma is ultimately self-defeating. Daniel and Max's superpowers cannot save them, but ultimately they both must confront the pain they feel and contextualize it into who they are now instead of pushing against it. Yet, their painful experience is not looked at as simply a burden that these characters must shoulder for the rest of their lives. Indeed, their experience enables them to better help and understand others. Max is able to stop a friend from committing suicide, while Daniel and his brother Sean are better able to bond after experiencing the death of their father. Certainly, trauma is not something to be put on a pedestal, but those who experience trauma are not broken. They simply have a specific struggle to handle that also gives them a new perspective on the world. Life is Strange understands that those who have PTSD are not broken, but instead are simply on a path to refine themselves, and may even find others to help along the way.